Hey, what's up everybody? This is tutorial number two, going into something like this beer bottle, beer bottle shatter, beer bottle, beer bottle shatter. The shattering system right here. It's going to take advantage of a lot of different techniques. Slowing things down, breaking things, controlling the break, revealing, and then timing. So a lot of interesting things going on here. And then allowing the whole thing to shatter. Let's jump in, start a new scene file here. Let's create the psych. Actually, we can do this differently. Making a cube, making it editable, deleting some of the faces, putting this in a sub D, US, US. All right, this is our psych. Cyclo, put this Alt G. That's our background. All right, let's just put a cube here for reference. Going to create a couple of lights. Just get this going early. I know this is a little bit backwards, but it'll help us later. Target area light. Shrink this down a little bit. I'm going to set up octane lights the way I know how to set them up. I know people have different methods. We'll just do a null object. Put that over here. I need to scale it. Bring it back down. And make the target light target. Put that in here. Check the light, make it on the side, control, drag the secondary light to the left, and control, drag another one to be on top. Ooh. There we go. So we'll group these lights. Alt G. Three paint light. And put the light target. Alt G. Lights. Put the lights in the BG. Alt and object. Put that scene. Okay. Now let's delete this cube. We go into the content browser. We can type in beer. Grab the beer bottle. Drag it into the scene. Go back to your objects menu. So what you can do here is pretty much delete. Let's delete all these materials for now because I'll show you how to create them. Just leave. We can actually delete all of them. Delete all the labels. We'll hit O to see the bottle. Zoom out a little bit. All right, it's created a little bit high. <laughs> Let's drag this down. Put it on the bottom of the psych. All right, here we go. This is the beginning of the scene. Let's create a cylinder. That we can use as a little bit of a platform. Just setting this up real quick. We're going to leave the cap. Add some segments here. Add a fillet. Take a quick peek in Octane, make sure everything's looking okay. 
those are really bright. Let's grab the three lights we got over here. Go to main, hit that button. It'll add a float texture and distribution if you want to do it even better. Grab a, an octane noise. And that will distribute and break up the light a bit more. Also can turn off surface brightness, but it's actually nicer like that. Pump up the sampling rate a little bit. You can really adjust the light. Just get a simple scene going. All right, this is the first part of the setup. Let's shut that down. Let's hit save. We'll shatter 002 final underscore. Okay, so we got our beer bottle, we got our psych, we got our camera. Simple setup, right? Okay, let us create this outer shell for the Vorno part. We'll just hide the bottle cap. That's for later. So what we're going to try and do is essentially create an outer shell, an inner bottle to reveal, a shape that is a collider for the shell pieces to break off of instead of the highly detailed mesh. And then we're going to also create a way to introduce dynamics into the Vornois simulation. So let's get into it. All right, so first we're gonna make a copy of this, hide this whole thing for later in case we need it. Um, backup bottle. All right, now this is inner bottle, but actually, so let's put that up, leave the cap here, actually put the cap separate. And then make this as the inner beer, also for later, because we're only really dealing with the bottle right now. So get rid of that, get rid of the beer. And I got inner bottle. shell. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to select all polygons in polygon mode. And we can look around here for a moment and see what's going on. So we selected all the polygons inside and out. And what we want to do is just select the outer polygons. And the way we're going to do that is... <laughs> Really, I've had, you can select UL and then UY, UY, UY to basically this might be the most ridiculous way of doing it, <laughs> but that didn't really work, did it? So let's try something else. Okay, so UP to create just that. We can hide it, we can hide it. Now we have just the outer shell. This is a lot easier with a sphere or a cube. 
but because we're doing it on the beer bottle, it's going to take a little bit longer. Okay, so now that we have that object, what we're going to do, since this is the area that's going to touch the inner bottle, we want to create a shell that's external to this. So if we hit D to extrude, create caps, and just expand outwards just a little bit. So now I've created some geometry. You can see there's a little bit of thickness to it. Really, this is just your preference, how thick you want to make it. So now we have that, and we have an inner bottle. If we select the inner bottle, we can keep it exact, but we could also just shrink the inner bottle ever so slightly. It's actually not necessary because what we're going to do is we're going to create a reference bottle inside. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to take just some simple shapes. We're going to make a cylinder. simpler the better. All right, so I'm going to shrink this down a little bit. So this is inner um, dynamic collider. Okay, now we can return some of these elements. Now we're still hiding that. <laughs> So all of that gave us an inner collider, an inner beer bottle, and an outer shell. Delete that. Let's look at it in the live viewer. Let's create some quick materials for this specular for the inner bottle. Create a glossy for the outer shell. Make this like a, a fun blue. And then the inner shell doesn't need anything, but let's create a diffuse material for the psych. And let's create another glossy material for the turntable. And we can make that also cool offset color for now. Okay, so what are we trying to do here? We are trying to crack this blue shell around this glass bottle and have this collider body push out or at least repel these shells as it's going. So let's do that. What's cool is that I figured out or I decided to use this instead of the actual high mesh internal object, which saves a lot of calculation time. So we might have to adjust this a little bit, but it's fine. Let's add a collider body to this object. And we'll put it inside and we can hide it. All right, cylinder is the turntable. Let's just put it in here. Turntable. Keep hitting save over here. Okay, we want to make this turntable also have a collider tag so things don't go through it. And even the cyclorama, we can just also add a the same tag here from the turntable, and we're going to turn it into a static mesh. 
grab both of those and the inner collider, turn down the bounce to like 10 and keep the friction like at 60. This will allow the, ob the fractured objects to kind of interact but also not bounce too much. So save again. Now let's introduce the Voronois fracture. So go to MoGraph, Voronois. Immediately you'll get the shells. In order to see it, we can do offset fragments. I think it's actually nice to look at in Octane. This is why it's nice to set up the lights and the scene early, because we can just immediately get a preview. Another cool technique is to offset a little bit, hit invert, and kind of get a cool mesh shell around the bottle. But that's not what we're doing right now. Let's keep the fragments like that. And what we want to do is really the point generator. I know that this is the default one, so let's change this up a little bit. Add maybe like 60 points. Maybe make it exponential or inverse normal. No, exponential. So we get some more shatter points up top. There we go. OK. Now what we want to do is add some dynamics, rigid body, and let's hit play. All right, so a lot of crazy, crazy stuff going on immediately. So what's happening is that, one, it's calculating too quickly, and a lot of things are getting intersected. It's also trying to figure out how to deal with itself. That was not explained very well, but I'm going to work it out over here. Reduce the friction on this object a little bit. The way I know how to fix this is to, let's look around a little bit. So there's some problem solving for sure. So first of all, what we're going to do is go to Command D. Just have to think about it for a moment. So Command D and go to your gravity modifier here, or this is the gravity for the whole scene, and hit zero. This immediately will chill out things just a little bit. It'll make it a lot cooler because things will just blast out instead of falling on the floor. But what we want is to slow down this expansion rate. So what we can also do is turn up the density way up. Already that's affecting it. And then air density, 100%, same thing. You're not noticing it that much, but it's affecting it. So what we're also going to do is on the fracture object, we're going to put force and add some drag and lift. 1% lift, maybe 40% drag for now. And there we go. That we, now we've controlled almost like magic these crazy fragments, but this we'll fix in a second because really sometimes the Voronoi fracture just needs a different seed. That's a little better. That's a little better. Let's make it a high quality mesh. And just change the points around. This is definitely some finessing, but ultimately you'll get the kind of fracture that you want. And what's happening is it's not really interacting with this high definition mesh, but this Oops. this guy right here. So we could even smooth this guy out. There's some finessing to go on, but this is the essence of the fracture. But what I'm going to show you is how to control the fracture even better. All right, first we'll deal with the flickering object in a moment, but first let's get this cool technique going on. So typically you can, I'm just going to do it, but let's add a sphere here. And this sphere is going to act as a ghost body. And if you've never used the ghost object or ghost tag before, 
it's this object that acts like a dynamic trigger while not actually affecting the object it's hitting. So if we add, for example, let's add this simulation ghost body tag. So now what we want to do is go to the Vornois fracture and go to collision and have, uh, sorry, the dynamics and the trigger instead of immediate, which is exploding it right now, we're going to do on collision. And that will basically keep it tight until something hits it. So typically you see these Vornois fractures being hit with objects, but if you take this sphere, for example, as a ghost object and you move it through, you'll see that it actually triggers. It's not doing it right now, but it will. <laughs> there we go. So now you can control just little areas of the fracture, basically because you're turning on dynamics just at the point where it's hitting the sphere. Shoutouts to EJ, I believe, from iDesign, who used this method in one of his tutorials, and I copped it. Thanks, EJ. It really works for this method in particular, but I'd love to use it for other things. All right, so now what we're going to do, just to quickly set up, we're going to keyframe the Y position of the sphere, go ahead to 90 frames, move it down to the floor, and hit keyframe. So really it's just going to move on its own, moving downwards. You could also just go 180 here, expand the timeline, and move this frame all the way so it's a little bit slower. And then we can just hide it and call it trigger ghost. Alright, and trigger ghost, I feel like doesn't matter, but I'm just going to add some segments to it in case having more polys makes the trigger easier, the smoother. Okay, why is it acting funny? I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm recording. But. I feel like it just broke. Right, let's try this another let's try this again. Huh. So odd. Okay, on collision. <laughs> okay, let's all right, ghost. Problem solving. All right, so it's about how fast you move this object through. So this is interesting. I was playing with this earlier, and I was going to show it to, to be a way to kind of control the break, the break even better. So it's basically a, about how fast this object is moving through in order to trigger. So let's hide this ghost now that it's working. Go back to our camera. Now you can kind of see these pieces being flung off. You still get this crazy dude over here, but we're going to fix that. Again, first is to play around with the point amount. Still getting one of those big chunks there. All right, let's make it maybe 80 points and see what's going on. Just because a large piece just gets flicked and then it hits right into, there you go, that's a little bit better. Now we're still getting one of these large pieces. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hide the inner bottle for a moment and we're going to just see what's happening with the collider. All 
I still have not perfected this, as you can see. I felt like it might have been simpler to do this because the other thing is just going to create so many more points to calculate. We could also try just for kicks to hide that and just make the inner bottle, the inner bottle, inner bottle, actually have the collider tag and see how bad it is. Yeah, that gets a little crazy. So let's not do that. Let's put this back to here. I'm sure we can fix this little issue. Okay, let's maybe what we can do. Alt, Control, Loft, and it puts all the objects in the loft. All right, we can put caps, all right. Now we can shrink these down a little bit so they all fit inside. All right, the insides inside, put this here. Pull this one up a little bit. And shrink these down a little bit. We're just trying to fit it right inside the bottle. Quite messy, isn't it? It's all good though. Okay. Put this loft in the famous connect object. Put this collider body tag on it, and let's try that again. Just need a much cleaner object, especially this part needs to crack. So let's add a few more points. It does take some work. It's not perfect, uh, or not even not perfect. It's just one of those effects that needs some tweaking. Cool. That looks nice. All right, let's go back to our camera. We can bring back our scene. And let's take a look at it in Octane. All right, so we're getting there. What I really want to do is hit D Command D, and you'll see the time scale over here. If we hit 10%, you'll see that things move awfully slow and nice, and it flickers some more. But even less, let's do time scale 1. We'll fix the flicker, but what we want to do is animate this time scale. So it's going to go from 1 at 90 frames, it's going to click to 10%, and then as it goes, it's going to go to, let's say, 80%. With gravity, it's going to start at 0 at 90, it's going to click to about 10%, so the shells start to gravitate towards the floor and then as it goes towards the end let's add about 200 gravity so it, they kind of eventually fall now let's take a look sometimes you need a few more frames here like the original had like 240 there we go so Let's uncouple for a second. We can see this up close. All right, so you can create a nice effect here, but you definitely want to 
mess around more with let's see maybe again what we could do is increase iterations but really it's the fracture it's because some of these shells are flying pretty hard so two things several things we can do let's try one thing here by increasing the trigger velocity threshold to 10 so it needs more power to break therefore it'll break slower less glitchiness that's kind of cool let's make it 20 that one looked like magic but that's kind of cool a couple of the shattered pieces didn't even get the power that they needed so it's still this one big piece this shell right here and just add another deviation, break it up. Now let's see what happens. And let's reduce that because they're starting to stick. Let's go back down to 12 here. There we go. That's looking cool. That's getting weird. Let's make that 14. Yeah. And to get these last ones, we can increase the size of our trigger ghost to 5. There we go. Very nice. Go back to the camera, open Octane, and appreciate the hard work for a moment. Okay, the reason it's dark is several reasons. One is common, fake shadows. Two is, okay, that already helped, but two is path tracing. Reduce this to 512, to 10, and 10 just for now. You can see this all right. All right, this is the basic effect. What we can do now is we can add some light and change some lights, add some color to the background. Let's change this glossy to duplicate it. Double click, change this to diffuse. Put this as the background to the psych. Let's change this to that nice yellow that I had. That's not yellow. That's yellow. Okay. What I don't have in here is an HDRI, which we can add to create some nice actual reflections. So I had a color background. I always like this kind of hue of pink. Make this visible. It doesn't really affect it, but it's just in the background. And then the other one, HDRI, we're going to add an image and then we're going to add an HDRI map. These are from the Maxim Raws. Just click here, add one of them, whatever your preference. Let's toy with it a little bit. First, let's hide the lights. Oh, that's what was going on. <laughs> All right, we're gonna hide our inner collider. It's like, what the hell is that? All right, there we go. Let's reduce that. Just want some ambience. And this turntable. Yeah, let's 
some more segments here, make that a little thinner. All right, what else do we need? Let's turn these lights back on. I think they need to be a little bit brighter, a little closer. So let's do that. Not all together. Let's bring this a bit closer. And we're going to mess with this float texture and allow a little more light to be emitted. Let's go to where do we have it? The top light, bring this down a bit. And I'm gonna also change the float texture here. Reduce both of these so they're not too hot. Gonna add some roughness to this material, a little roughness to this material. This is very, very simple. Almost no texturing going on, but just want to get the effect in a nice render, simple render. Oh, okay, so we can do a couple more things. We can also texture both sides of these shells. So let's do that. Um, Vornois fracture, selections, inside faces, outside faces. Put this blue up here and make those outside faces. And then let's take this yellow material, make that inside faces. Now what's going on is because I made it thick, it's actually just giving a yellow edge to this. There's a couple of ways we could deal with this, but that might be better served in another video, unless we could do it with, let's see, inside vertex map, surface edge, not really, I haven't figured out exactly how to do this. If you have a way to texture these inside using this method, let me know. But this is essentially the method that I used to create the first effect that was over here, beer bottle reveal. Although I used slightly different textures. And a thicker bottle. Actually, the lighting here is pretty good. So let's just let me grab the lights. See what I did. Co copy. Get me. Actually, let me work on the lights and make it good without cheating. So I think the color was a bit more blue. Same thing with the background here. That's a bit closer. So what I was thinking is I had a couple of lights on the side that made some nice patterns, so kind of drawing and carving with light. Let's take a left light, and duplicate it, and make it a bit skinnier. You can kind of see it outlined here, and that creates a nice double reflection. Move it back a little bit. Kind of decrease the power on it. The other thing you can do is take the right light and make it wider. Actually, no, sorry, you can make it taller. And that will create a nice rim along this. That didn't work. <laughs> Let me try that again. Make that taller. Bring it closer. Here we go. Reduce this a little bit. All right, 
getting the nice silhouette. And then we can hide these lights in camera. Oh, these are also looking at this light target, so we could play with that as well, the angle of the light target. Okay, maybe it's because also the cyclo is a little bit big. Let's shrink that. Okay. Let's make the platform a little taller. Okay, we're going to add some depth of field, hit focus, and hit the bottle, and then some of the objects will be in and some will be out of focus. We probably don't need that much, so let's reduce that to two. Oh, another thing, I didn't do the cap, so we could we can actually create the cap and have it pop off. So let's do that. Let's bring this up here and turn on the bottle cap. And then go to these textures, add a rigid body, and I'm gonna make the rigid body similar so it's also triggered by the ghost body. So on collision give it a trigger velocity so it holds still and also let's create a metallic material here actually so the inside could be gold if you wanted it to but let's just make the cap gold add a tiny bit of roughness You'll see it kind of peeks through over here. But we can adjust that by either shrinking the cap, touch, or moving the cap. Um, actually, we can do it. Hmm. We just shrink the cap. It's not going to show that much, but you'll see. There are a couple of ways we could do it, but this would be the simplest way to just shrink it down. That's why I made the shell a little bit thicker before, but regardless, you get this cool flying off bottle cap. I'm going to do a very quick render here so we can see what this looks like. 25, 5, test, 5, 12, all frames, maybe 50 here, catch you in a second. All right, last part of the tutorial, just have this rendering here, a little test. I know we janked out a little bit on the cap, but it really doesn't make a difference. It's going to fly off anyway. What we could really do is really just make the shell a little bit thicker and also scale up the bottle cap if we wanted to as it flew off, but it's almost really irrelevant unless you want to keep it on the bottle, in which case we could just remove the dynamics. And then as soon as it shattered, we could just increase the size of the bottle cap very quickly and you couldn't really see. All right, this is looking pretty nice. Let's do a couple of last things here. One is what I'd like to do is actually texture this inside. I know I said I couldn't do it, but I think we can do it given the tag that we previously had. So let's stop this render. 
open Octane Live Viewer, go back in here, and you can kind of see that I have the outer shell that I had previously selected in order to create the outer shell. So since that's selected, you can do UI to invert that selection. So that selects everything inside. And we're going to add a set selection tag. And for that, could be wrong. But let's see if it's possible to add yellow to this polygon selection. Turn this back on. Get rid of that yellow tag. Put this blue tag over here. Let's see what happens if this shatters. All right, so it is yellow on the inside. All right, so maybe we just don't use the Bournois selection tags. Let's just go back to here. Outer shell, UI, set selection. And add that to the blue material. And there we go. Now we have blue on the inside, blue on the outside, yellow on the inside. Bit of a hacky way to do it, but it works. All right, what else can we do here? I think the depth of field is a little bit intense. I could probably adjust the lighting infinitely. But I think this is it for now. Let me just quickly add that cool noise texture to the turntable and also adjust that depth of field. And actually adjust this as well like floating dishes, 69.5, no, 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 this is real hacky, <laughs> I'm sure y'all have done it before, make that 22 and make it 0.9, all right, Looks cool, it's like eggshells, and let's, yeah, so put this on top of the turntable and add a noise in the opacity layer, noise. Change the default value, get some contrast all the way up, and maybe an electric pattern. There we go. That gives it some nice pop. All right, let's add just a tiny bit of adjustment to this glass material. I know because it's sucking a little bit. Let's make this more refractive. And in roughness, we're going to add an image texture, like smudges. Let's use fingerprints. Everybody uses this. It smudges it up a little, reduce the power on it really low. Okay. Let this render and Thanks so much for tuning in to second tutorial. I know this was a little bit meandering and problem solving, but I think it's a cool effect. I did it once a long time ago with a green bottle with gold, and I felt like I wanted to tackle it again. It's one of the few that I feel like I haven't really seen done in all these different ways. Ghost Body from EJ, and yeah, hope you enjoyed this one, and I'll see you in the next.